Hi, Archie. Hiya, uh, you right? Yeah, I'm good. So, um, good. yeah, thanks for your time. I've just noticed that my desk is wobbly, so I'll try not to slam onto it too much because <laughs> the, no the camera just wobbles. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so you're in you're in um, Surrey or London? I forget. Where are you? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Surrey at the moment. You're in Surrey, uh, okay. Up until, well, end of lockdown on, I think, July. So I'm in okay. Guildford at the moment. Okay, cool, nice. But then I'm moving back to London. How did you get into music in the first place? Like, where did, when did it start? Um, well, I was originally a drama student at my high school. Okay. Um, but I, um, when I moved from primary school to high school, um, mm -hmm. I started guitar lessons because my dad um, always played guitar mm -hmm. and uh, not necessarily professionally or anything, just as a kind of hobby. Yeah. And he said, oh, I want you to learn guitar. And I really wanted to. So they bought me one. They bought me a guitar when I was a... Uh, 10 mm -hmm. and then i took guitar lessons and music completely overtook drama wow cool and oh, uh was it was it a guitar in a particular style that you were being taught or what what, what were they teaching you at, at the beginning it was kind of just um chords and stuff chords like neil young that kind of mm, thing yeah. some brian adams that yeah that kind of thing right. but i was doing grades as well so mm. um mm -hmm. th those were very helpful with my progression mm -hmm. but then as i um as I sort of progressed, I gained a love for blues music. Mm. That's where that's where it all kind of kicked off. Uh, what kind of blues? What, what, what were you into? What were you listening to? Sort of Stevie Ray Vaughan. He was wow. my cool. idol, and. Um, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Eric Clapton, you know the big, the big guys, uh, and uh, yeah, and then now there's incredible blues musicians still um, mm -hmm. bringing it, bringing it into the mainstream, like yeah. John Mayer, who yeah. I discovered probably about two years ago, yeah. and he's just an incredible musician. Yeah. So I still have my love for the blues. Yeah, I got into the blue. <laughs> I got into the blues heavily. Uh, I mean, you do, don't you? I think you have yeah. to almost. It, you know? It's definitely as a guitarist, it's the yeah. kind of, it's the go-to. It is. And then obviously that expanded to Pink Floyd. Yes. It was it was a massive, massive one. Yeah. Um, obviously, and uh, yeah, those kind of guys, prog rock scene. Mm. I used to go to a Saturday school mm. on, um, it was called Arts on Rocks at my school, and uh, it was a two hour session on a Saturday where you'd spend the first hour learning a new tune mm -hmm. and uh, the second hour performing it with a band. Wow, great. So uh, you all learnt it together and performed it together after, and that, yeah. th that was massively helpful for yeah. my musicianship especially yeah, yeah. Sure. and uh one of my favorites was uh pinball wizard <laughs> mm, yeah that, that was a good that was a good one yeah. that's a great one for a guitarist yeah when i got like uh, a little bit older i got into van halen massively oh yeah, Lo yeah. i like van halen as well they, they they were just astonishing you know and, yeah i was just impressed just so impressed by by uh eddie van halen it was just incomprehensible how fast he played <laughs> yeah yeah and yeah, with so much soul as well at the same time. Especially at that time, you know, like it, when it was new. You know, now yeah. it's like everyone on YouTube is doing it. But I mean, um, at the time. And actually, yeah. you know, what amazes me, because he died not so long ago. And yeah. I sort of, I re-explored it because I've kind of pushed all of that type of music to the side really now. But mm -hmm. I kind of, when he died, I kind of went back into it and read his a bit more about his life story and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the amazing thing about it for me was how it was still fairly contemporary with things like Led mm -hmm. Zeppelin and stuff. Definitely. And you think and you think of it as being, you know, much later than stuff like Led Zepp. But mm -hmm. I mean, um, mm -hmm. Van Halen were gigging in sort of the early 70s, I think. And, uh, really? you know, it's well, pretty amazing stuff, really. I, yeah. I ended up going to a jam session when I was sort of 18. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd go to blues jam sessions. <laughs> And it, it was
was hard to kind of stay relevant i guess i was playing with a lot of older guys who played traditional blues yeah and they were saying ah oh, you know uh blues in g here we go yeah <laughs> and <laughs> to do that every single uh week it, uh you you've got to keep it relevant and fresh yeah. i think so the blues influenced things mm, like yeah. um john mayer and that kind of thing yeah. is very interesting to me now yeah definitely i had some vhs tapes of um things like Woodstock and uh, yeah. Monterey. Hendrix is a strange woman in, for me in the sense that I prefer his live stuff as opposed to his studio stuff. No, and, I, I, see, I definitely see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess this shows the age difference between us is that I watched all those stuff on YouTube when I was yeah, yeah. for the Monterey performance. Lucky and, you, because I mean, it was harder to get stuff. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, it's so uh, easy. No, now. it's so easy, yeah. I, I was still doing drama, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, but I ended up going. I, ch I ended up choosing the music school over the uh, oh. drama school on the yeah. on the um, Saturday school. Yeah, was playing in bands, and um, a lot of my friends were kind of getting serious about music as well. Mm -hmm. And they in, uh, they introduced me to jazz and mm -hmm. funk mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And we ended, mm -hmm. we ended up uh, forming a jazz funk band <laughs> right right um, how old yeah. were you then at that point I was probably about 16 or 17 okay. then uh -huh. so yeah and we, we were just playing like just into instrumental covers of like isn't she lovely like loads yeah. of Stevie Wonder stuff we did right. a performance of um, the whole of songs in the key of life uh -huh. um, and we also did Larry Carlton stuff Stevie uh -huh. Dan yeah. that kind of stuff right yeah. it's good fun so you were still basically guitarist at that point, yeah? You, yeah. Could, you hadn't gone, you hadn't diversified from the guitar. No, and were you, were you beginning to think about it as a serious direction for your life? Or? Definitely, yeah. I definitely was. But I remember going to a parents' evening when I think I was about 17 and I said mm. to my music teacher, oh, I want to be an actor musician, <laughs> yeah. which is, uh, I guess, like a, a musician that, I, a, an actor that can perform perform guitar on stage yeah. or something right um if need be yeah. but uh i realized how hard it was to become an actor definitely uh -huh. um just as a as a sole um career move but yeah. um do you think harder yeah. than being a musician um i think so yeah um i i would say so um because it it depends if you're if you have like a laser focus as a musician a kind of mm. like i want to be a composer or mm. i want to be a session musician um it it's definitely a kind of uh career drive that you mm -hmm. have whereas um if you're an actor you're expected to be extremely diverse in what you yeah. do i guess yeah um i don't know i i, I never really followed it now so I, i'm mm. not sure what it's like anymore mm. but Mm -hmm. but yeah so and then after that um that was when i first started getting into composing music mm -hmm. um at a level so i right. i'd written a small orchestral score mm -hmm. like a john williams type score and i i mm -hmm. there was no movie but i'd like labeled oh this is where the guy would uh, uh -huh. like exit the uh spaceship or whatever yeah i yeah. labeled it on the score I so you imagined it it. some kind of scenario yeah. yeah yeah and uh and then after that i was like oh no I, drama's not for me anymore i'm definitely doing music and, it's interesting yeah. do you think that the um fact that you had done drama somehow was part of the reason why you're attracted to music for a video if you like do you th the connection yeah, between so. the two as like um you know it's a massive uh film buff i guess yeah, yeah. as well the the two loves of film and music yeah um kind of combined sure so, yeah because so, yeah. i spoke to sarah warren who's one of the judges mm -hmm. for our um score relief competition mm -hmm. and she was saying that she studied literature at university oh, and um she thinks it really helps her because yeah, she I understands imagine, yeah. she understands about storytelling yeah you know? what's good writing y yeah you know? and about about the story about the narrative and stuff mm, like that mm, which, mm. 
and perhaps in a, some sense your acting you know the drama perhaps it informs yeah, the music a little bit. definitely cool um, I, it, it's it's hard um i think you have to get um you have to kind of gain a um a, a bit of a snobbery mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. as to um what what's not good but w why you like something mm -hmm. and then yeah and then that can inform your writing and your yeah. um yeah uh, like your your production your own production some taste basically yes yeah? some kind yeah. of personal taste yeah. yeah do you so i mean so you did this john williamsy thing so does that mean you'd already started to experiment with sort of midi and keyboards and sort of sound libraries and stuff yeah um yeah. so i think before before that we did a a, a small um for music gcse we did a small composition mm. that was a piano composition and i think i put some flute in there <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh some i think i think i put some strings in there i can't can't mm. quite remember i think i was about mm. how old are you 15 or 16 15 yeah. at uh gcse so you and, don't have uh, them lying around we can't no. show them no <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was all uh like midi and uh but you know just writing the notes into sibelius and yeah um, right that was my first kind of experience with that and um after that it was just I, I just found it so much fun hmm. so by that stage you already had a good grounding in theory you could write and read mm. music yeah 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 mm -hmm. we um i i also used to take um again i was so lucky with my upbringing with my school how how good they were with uh theory classes before school we had mm. um and then they would sort out us to do our exams at the end of the term or whatever for mm -hmm. music theory just yeah. extra classes here and there like saturday school yeah. um, which really just kind of excel helped us to excel and accelerated yeah. our kind of progression in music so cool. I, was, cool. I was very lucky with that and was composition a big part of the a level or was that something you were kind of doing under your own steam no it was a big part of uh, music a level actually especially okay. music tech um learning mm. to use logic and mm. um recording and uh, mm -hmm. we we had a um a kind of small recording studio mm -hmm. in our in our school with two cool. rooms yeah. um a vocal booth and then just other instruments drum kit that kind of thing so cool. we were lucky in that respect with a nice console yeah. and um yeah so we learned production and that just mm -hmm. again helped us out to do our own work outside and then um so that was all music tech and then the actual music a level was composing a lot composing and arranging um mm. we had a coursework which was arranging a an old uh a melody into an old folk folk um performance mm -hmm. that was good fun as well mm. um so yeah it was a lot of composition and a lot of um studying things that you'd never come across before mm -hmm. like uh like a lot of the jazz funk that i'd never really come across before that mm. and weird music <laughs> outside of uh outside of uh outside of music basically so yeah um well, did you just, did you did you have to study any sort of non-western music like mm. Mm, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. we we did uh, one of the things we studied was Anushka Shankar. Mm. Um, she had uh, we studied one of her albums and it was um, incredible. Yeah. Um, oh, I can't think now. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, there was a a lot of uh, other stuff outside right. Western traditional music. So um, it broadened broadened you know sort of interest and knowledge a lot. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, and that was sort of my first encounter with kind of classical music as well mm -hmm. right. we studied Berlioz and Bach and um, uh -huh. and that kind of stuff and were you yeah. very open to it or was it something that you did because you had to uh no I was open to it I, th yeah. I think I, I would say I was uh -huh. I I'm definitely um you know it's it's always good to go into um music or film with an open mind mm. um because as, as long as someone's justifying their creation mm. um you know is is a pretty beautiful thing and it's hard yeah. to say no to like a gorgeous Berlioz symphony anyway <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 absolutely and it just somehow enriches your you understanding know, sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah and yeah. sort of tool set in a way i think perhaps yeah, you definitely. know um so cool and then you decided to do the surrey degree yeah, yeah. So uh -huh. um, then I went to Surrey, um, which I've 
just left now. Uh-huh. Um, okay. uh, so there's this is a, where it gets interesting. 